Welcome back to New Day Northwest. You know, few of us try to be the worst at our job, but what if you were? For 13 years, Sonam Obsessian has been comedy legend Conan O'Brien's personal assistant, and she admits she is terrible at her job. Her new book, The World's Worst Assistant, is an irreverent how-to, a roadmap, if you will, on how to be a terrible yet unfireable employee. So, of course, we had to have Sona on to tell us more. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This um, is so fun. So excited to talk about this. You know, Conan wrote the foreword. Were you worried what he was going to write? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I wrote a book called The World's Worst Assistant uh -huh. about how for 13 years I've been terrible at assisting him. So I thought he would take the opportunity in the foreword to sort of get back at me. But yeah. he actually wrote a really sweet, very... Uh, honest, true Aww. forward. So it was nice. Yeah, but I was terrified. But it's not like say. you wrote the book, The World's Worst Boss. I mean, no, you no. took it on yourself. No, I did. But also, you know, it's there is I can't be the world's worst assistant if I didn't have at a certain level, the world's worst boss. Yeah. And I think both of us kind of bring out the worst in each other. Well, okay, I love that. I yeah. Because there's nothing better than bringing out the worst in someone yeah. um, that you work with and you want to be successful. So what makes a bad assistant? Like, how does one get there? So for assistants, you know, you really have to uh, pay attention to the small details. Mm -hmm. You have to be very thorough. You have to be a self-starter. You have to be able to take initiative. And those are all things I have never been able to do. I was going to say, I would have been fired first day if that's the case. <laughs> I'm shocked I wasn't. <laughs> um, so how did you say your relationship is built on trust and nagging? Yes. How so? Nagging, I mean, I think that, uh, well, trust in the sense that, you know, over the years we've learned to trust each other. Mm. But nagging is, I think that we both kind of get something out of this really mm -hmm. dysfunctional dynamic. I think he gets a lot of comedy material and I just get to watch TV at work all day. So I think that it's... It's, it works for both of us. I love this. You know, one section of your book is titled, Why Conan Can't Fire Me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you share a few reasons why? Because if you're terrible, and I want to know also how you didn't get fired in the first place. Like, how did you make it through? Well, I think that I started off really wanting to do well at the job. Right, I mean, right. when we first met, I was a go-getter. I was really into it. And then somehow down the line, when he started to make fun of me and I started to make fun of him and we both started to laugh, we both realized this could be what this re relationship is. And yeah. it really works for us. And I think that... Uh, I've just sort of been planting myself into places where I can't be removed. So, you know, his phone is under my name. I have his, <laughs> uh, 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 I have his car linked up to my phone so I can control it remotely. Oh. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's diabolical stuff, but it's also, I've made uh -huh. myself, put, I put myself in a position where I cannot be fired. That's genius. Yeah, it is. It's pretty brilliant. That is pretty brilliant. I, if there's anything I put work into, mm. it's, it's being terrible at my job and protecting yourself exactly which is key yes in the employment field I like it um you also travel together for shows even a special in Armenia yeah where your ancestors are from what was that like it was amazing I mean it was his idea to go we went after Cuba so he went to Cuba with mm -hmm. the show and we filmed a special there and it was great mm -hmm. and then he we were thinking about other places we could go and he suggested going to Armenia and it was my first time ever going oh and look and at it was, you know oh yeah look at us we're herding sheep yes. and talking about The Bachelor at the same time. As so one does while herding sheep. This is how sheep. I got rooted with my ancestors, mm. is herding sheep with a giant Irish man in the mountains of Armenia mm. while talking about The Bachelor. So hope, that's, that's what we did. I love that. I hope he wore sunscreen. The sun looks rather hot for his fair skin. I think that he, I think sunscreen is just a part of his body now. He he's put just, so much on over the course of his life. I think it's just part of his, his DNA. skin. Yes. His DNA has changed. <laughs> I think that's fascinating. Well, that was so supportive of him to come it with was. you. He sounds like a great boss. I heard he bought yes. you a car. Uh, you heard wrong. Uh, I, I heard wrong. Yes. Uh, he, he, I asked him to buy me a car. Oh, so hmm. you know what? He did buy me a car. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. He did so, or? So we did a special on the show where he tears apart my car that I had, and then he bought me this $500, $500 I think, I mean, it must have been a 25-year-old Honda oh. that 
looked like someone had been murdered in it. Nice. Yeah, so did he buy me a car? Technically, yes. Mm. Uh, am I able to drive it without fearing for my life? Mm. No. So, no, I, yeah, no. it's, you know, I guess technically you're right. He did buy me Does a car. Does he want to contain you to have an assistant? Sending you off in the streets of LA in a 25 year old Civic. I don't know. I don't think so. Exactly. You and Conan are still very much a part of each other's lives. You're we still are. his assistant. I'm still his assistant. I am, yeah. And and you, but you co host a podcast as well, which I've I actually do. listened to. I'm a fangirl a little bit because oh, I love it. I'm so happy to hear that. That's um, great. You say you've changed his life for the better. And maybe he yours. He def he definitely changed my life for the better. I mean, I, I am, you know, in all sincerity, it's been a dream working for him. He is a wonderful boss, and he let me get away with a lot. Uh, and he's been really supportive, and he really is just the best boss, so yeah. I am very lucky. I don't know if I changed his life for the better. I, I think I did. I think you did. I think, you know, in instances where we have, like, a last-minute cancellation for a guest <laughs> where Kumail Nanjiani can't make it, I think it is comforting to him to just be like, oh, the person who sits outside my office can, yeah. can fill in, and I, I do. And so. they just tell you, what do they just tell you, hey, head into makeup? That's exactly what they said. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Head into makeup. They don't tell you what's happening. No. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. It all happened so fast. They were like, just get into makeup. And then while I was sitting there, I was like, what is happening? Why am I getting makeup put on? And, it, and then I thought they would fill time, and then they didn't. And then they called me out there, and I said, okay, yeah, that, I'm actually going to be a guest on a, on a late-night talk show now. Okay, so what did you all talk about? We talked about, uh, well, so during the car segment, I asked him to buy me a car. Right. And then during the segment on the show, I asked him to buy me a house. Okay. So I had the whole audience chanting to buy me a house. They were all on board. He did not. Uh, and the car, then, anything. yeah, and then there was other things we talked ooh, about, ooh. about my dog. I mean, we had a, just a really fun I conversation. I yeah. have to Google that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sona, thank you so much thank for you, sharing thank this. You. Um, and she will be sharing more funny excerpts from her book tonight, July 19th at 7 o'clock at Third Place Books in Lake Forest Park. We've got all the event info on our website. It's a very funny read. Don't miss out on this. And